today. I've got my telescope set up tonight at Mount Bernard Observatory. And I thought that uh, after all these years of uh, running it and showing you the photos, you might like to actually see uh, what the setup looks like, uh, what's involved and all the different bits and pieces. So I thought I'd take you on a brief walk through. So here I am set up next to my car. I carry everything in the back. It all fits nicely when it's packed down. So we've got the basic, most important part here, the telescope itself. That's the big black tube running down the center. And this is a reflecting telescope. So if you look down the length of the tube, you'll see at the bottom a mirror. And at the top, you can see another mirror on sort of cross legs. And that is what reflects the light back out the side. So the light goes down the tube, hits the mirror at the back, is bounced back up and focused through the secondary mirror and then down this tube here, which is connected to the camera. So this red cylinder on the back there, that's the astrophotography camera. It's specifically designed for getting photos of the night sky. Uh, it doesn't have a screen, doesn't have a battery, doesn't have a, a uh, card slot, doesn't even have a shutter. It's all computer controlled. It does have a couple of extra features though, such as a cooler, which you can see that um, grill on the back there is part of that. Now, following the camera up the train here, we've got this disc thing here, the EFW, that's short for electronic filter wheel. And inside that, there's seven different colored filters. So the camera is a mono camera. It only shoots in black and white. So in order to get color images, I need to shoot through filters. And uh, that may sound like a bit of a pain, but in doing so, I can get higher resolution. I can get more sensitivity. And it also means I can use specialized filters, which um, pick out the colors of wavelengths of light that are specifically associated with different elements glowing, like hydrogen, oxygen, and sulfur. So that let me get some pretty interesting images. Now, the camera is plugged in by USB to a USB port, which I have nestled in here between the telescope and its plate that attaches to the mount. And I'll come, come back to that, but that all goes back to my computer. There also is a uh, power for the cooling unit, which is currently not connected. I've got it plugged in the back of the telescope right now, which is running a little fan, and that will help stabilize the internal temperature with inside the telescope, because uh, I've had it in my car boot for this afternoon and it's gotten a little bit hot. So uh, once it gets dark enough to start imaging, I'll be taking that power cord and putting it into the cooler for the camera. So back to the camera, we'll follow up the optical chain. So in between here, in the camera there, between the, the camera, the electronic filter wheel, and then here and going inside the focusing tube is a special optic that helps uh, keep everything as sharp as possible. The, um, the problem is that mirror telescopes like this do have a problem called coma. Uh, that means that the corners of the images don't stay sharp when the center is. So I have to run a, um, a special piece of glass in the middle of that in order to correct for it. Then we've got this blue piece of metal, which is kind of shiny and kind of attractive. That is the focusing knob or the focuser itself. And on this side, we've got a manual hand operated focusing knob, but I rarely touch that. On the other side though, it's connected to a motor. And that motor is connected on the other side That runs off to the USB port uh, and therefore back to my computer. So that's all computer controlled. Of the telescope, we have another mini telescope and a mini camera. And this is a guide system, a guide scope. And what this does is it takes a sort of a live video stream of the same part of the sky that I'm imaging, but it picks out a single star and it follows that star throughout the entire time that I'm taking photos. So if the camera sees that the star is moving slightly, so it's drifting to the left or right or up or down, it sees that and it sends a uh, information back to the computer, which then tells the telescope drive to compensate for that movement. And so it keeps the star in the right position. So I can get to about one and a half pixels accuracy throughout an entire four hour sequence, which is pretty remarkable. So heading down the telescope, 
the uh, the black plate there that you can see, which is just above the USB, oh sorry, just below the USB port uh, hub, that is the plate that mounts onto the telescope mount itself. So that's this thing here. Uh, it's sitting on some tripod legs, big beefy tripod, but the most important part is the actual the mount, the drive itself. So. This gets aligned when the, it gets dark enough with the South Celestial Pole so that when the telescope rotates, it sort of rotates around this axis. You can see that going up and down here, it rotates around this way. And that means that I can follow the movement of the stars throughout the night without having to worry about uh, keeping track in two directions. It'll just track in one. Makes things a lot simpler and it means I can get long exposures. Uh, that's got a fairly fine and precision crafted uh, gear inside there to keep that running as smoothly as possible. But each, each um, these gears always have a little bit of a, an error in them, a periodic error it's called, but that's what's compensated for by the guide scope on top. Now on the front here, I've got another little camera. So there's the third camera on this setup. And this is strictly for nothing else but aligning the telescope to the celestial pole. I have to get that as accurately as possible so that it can track the stars as accurately as possible without there being any drift throughout the exposure. So this camera replaces looking through a, uh, an actual telescope which is built into the mount of the telescope. If I take the back off here, you can see there's the eyepiece for it. And that's what I used to use to look up at the night sky beyond to try and align the telescope. But that is a tedious process, very difficult to do, and it's really hard to see the faint stars that we need to align on. So using this camera at the front here is a much easier and much more accurate way of doing that. Uh, right down the bottom, I've got a huge battery, which is what I'm using to drive most of the equipment you've seen so far. Uh, the only thing I'm not running with the battery, although I could if I was remote, because this does output 240 volts, because I'm at a site that's powered, I can use um, a powered system. Uh, I'm using that to power the USB hub and my laptop. And the laptop controls everything. So if you look back on the back of the USB hub, you can see there's the power with the blue um, Velcro on it. And just next to that, that's the USB out. And that comes all the way around here and into the back of this box and connects to my computer and the computer controls everything. So it takes all the information on the positions of the, the mount, where the telescope's pointing, takes the data from the guide scope, from the polar alignment camera, and of course, from the main camera itself. And I control everything from there, um, which means that it's uh, pretty much once I've set it up and it's running correctly, I can just press a few buttons, start the image sequence, and take the photos all night long. Well, I go inside and have a couple. So that's a basic rundown of the telescope system that I'm using. Uh, it's let me get a lot of cool images so far, and I'm hoping in the future it'll let me continue to get lots more. So I hope you found that interesting and you've got a better idea now of what it is I do on the cold and sometimes hot nights uh, for hours on end. Thanks for watching. Give us your message, please.